Okay, go. All right, so we're up to Pasuk uh, Zion, Ches. We're in the story of Yiftach. So we had the beginning of the story where Yiftach has this uh, tragic upbringing in a situation where he's a Ben Isha Zoyna, Kipshutai, according to Mos Mefarshim. And as a result of that, his brothers don't like him and they chase him away from home. Some Mefarshim say they actually wanted to kill him. Sometimes that's like the solution. You don't like something, just get rid of it. Um, there are actually Mefarshim, I didn't put... That's wrong. Either no matter what, it's wrong. But uh, what the Mefarshim say? So the so I wanted to point out some Mefarshim say that she was just a pilega. She wasn't a zayna, and uh, and therefore it was obviously even more wrong of them to chase him to chase him away because pilegish it seems like it was mutter not mutter at that time but it's for sure not a zayna. And there's even a third pidush that says she wasn't even a pilega. She was a kosher Jewish woman, but she was from a different shevet. And therefore, the Bnei Yiftach, the, the, the Bnei Gila, the, his, his half brothers, they said, when our father's going to die, so he's going to get uh, he's going to get part of the Yerusha. And then, since his mother's from a different shevet, they might pass on somewhere else. So that was really wrong of them, according to that. Now, according to all the Pidushim, it was wrong. He ran away to his life. We said he was some kind of you want to call it a gangster, a, a, a godfather, epist, like a very popular over there. He had a lot of people following with him. And finally, the Yidden now they have no choice because Amoin. Amoin at that time is where um, uh, Jordan is today. It's on the, say it's on the, on the other side of the river of the Jordan where today is like where exactly Amin is, Amin and Amoyev, they're basically where Jordan is today. So they were the ones that were making the Yidin Sardis. And now the Yidin, they come to come to Yiftach and his response to them is, you guys hated me, you chased me away. Why are you coming now to come to me? So he's asking them basically like, what changed over? If I'm not, not, if I'm not good enough, to be amongst you guys till now, why, why are you coming to me now? So their response is very, very strange. They tell him, That's why we came back to you. Come with us and you'll be a fight against Bnei And you'll be the leader of all Yishvigila. In the simple title of the Psukim, nothing really changed. They came and they said, "Come, you'll help us win the war, and you'll be our you'll be our cuts, and you'll be our general." And he and he like, responds to them like, I, "I didn't forget what you guys did to me. I'm still somewhat insulted or hurt by it, and I still I don't understand like, why now I'm good enough for this." And he said, "That's why we came back to you. Come and be a leader." So what's going on over here? It's not so clear in the psukim. So there's many different ways of explaining the story. One way of explaining the story is is that they told him. With the word lochin, there basically there's a whole ap- apology hidden in these words. And he said, you're right, we were wrong. Now, who is we? That's also a big question. The we over here, who are these people? Are they the Zkenim that were the ones that were involved in actually chasing him away? According to some, it was worse than that. It was his actual half-brothers. They the ones, they the same ones, that they chased him away, they came to him now, which is... In a way similar to Yosef and his brothers, you know, after they finally meet in the, in the palace over there, like the same bush that they had, here it's a, they're, they're coming on their own, and they're, they're, they're coming now. So what's the lochin? They say, that is why we came to you. You're right. And, and, and the way the Mepharshim say this, that they're telling him, really, we could have sent shluchim to call you. Meaning, we could have sent other people. The fact that we're coming on our own here is showing, we, we're coming with that to bring out this point that we're, we're apologizing and we, we came to say a, a sorry as well. If it would just be about the fact that we need a warrior, we can send anybody to call you. The fact that we're coming is showing you that we feel, really feel bad. That is one Nekudah Mepharshim point out. Another Nekudah Mepharshim point out is that they originally offered him to be a Katsin. A Katsin means just a general in the army. And when he told them that that's, that's all you're giving me, like just to be a general, like again, the main, the main message is what changed from before to now. And now they added the word Roish. There's a difference between a Kotzin and a Roish. A Kotzin is just a general in the army. And generals in the army, even though they might be popular, but they're not the leaders of the community. Um, in Eretz a lot of times the generals later on become uh, important politicians. I think in America also some uh, politicians, some uh, warriors become politicians, but it's really two separate jobs. And Lav Davke, does a general become the prime minister? So over here they were telling him, you're right, that the fact that we're asking you to be a general doesn't show on the fact that we're regretting it. That's not enough. But we're offering you to be a, a, a reish, not stop. 
The fact that we're offering to be our day shows on our real apologies, because this has been a kotze la kotze. Beforehand, we were so uh, pushed you away to the point that you couldn't even be in a regular home, and now we're not just letting you come to the army. They have all, and many armies will hire what they call the mercenaries. Yeah, what are mercenaries? Uh, the, the Wagner group. Huh? The Wagner group. The who? The Wagner group. Wagner Group. Yeah, from Russia. The guy got killed. He was the head of a mercenary group. Okay, not familiar. But the mercenaries are basically um, people that are known to be gangsters, and whoever pays them the highest amount, they're going to come and join their armies. And while they're there, they might be leaders in the army, but before and after, everybody knows they have no connection to this country. Now they're telling him, if all we would care about is just to help us, fight, you should help us fight against Bnei Amin, we would only offer you to be a Katsin. But really, we're offering you to be a Rosh. We're offering you to be a leader of the Yidin. And this is huge because it's like having a gangster, like we said, a simple pshat, suddenly he becomes the leader of the Yidin. Like you're offering someone to be the Rebbe, like Ma'akesh or such a person, how can he be in charge? But they're telling him the fact that we're offering that to you, that shows that we realize that we didn't understand you. That when we chased you away then, we didn't realize who you really were. So I want to point out something else also, is that a lot of times, the reasons why the gangsters become these gangsters and so, in a way, successful in their ways is because they have hard, hard lives. A lot of times people are successful because they're chased away, they get better. I know a certain, uh, a certain Anhala member in a certain yeshiva that he was kicked out of yeshiva as a bacher. And because he was kicked out, that's why he was more successful in other yeshivas and that's why he later on uh, became a member of Anhala no yeshiva. Yes, yeah, so that happens, so the... Pss, pss, so they get, they're getting kicked out, sometimes that itself, you learn from what, the, as a result of getting kicked out, that itself builds you up and that makes you uh, more successful. And, you wanna go home? <laughs> and that itself brings out in you, it, it, it teaches you how to survive, it teaches you how to think about yourself, it makes you realize what were you doing till now, and that builds you up in a way. So it could also be that Yiftach's, in a way, they're like telling him, not, not like uh, subtly, like, you know, you have to realize that your success, as much as we're wrong, and when we chased you away, when we kicked you out, the goal wasn't that you should become more successful. We had our bad intentions, but in the bigger picture, this sending you off actually has a shaykhist, and you're becoming all successful now, and a powerful warrior. If you would have stayed home together with the rest of your family, you've been a nice little yeshiva boy, and you wouldn't have any shaykhist to become a, 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 big, a big guy. So the Mela, we have a part of this also, and we're telling you now, we realize that it was a mistake, we, we see your qualities now, so we're not just offering to be a cutson, we're offering to you to be our rush. So now again, Yiftach responds to them. So now we're ready, it's a nice offer. Now they're not just telling him, we're not just telling him, come back and you know, we need you to, you're a strong guy, come back and fight with us. Rather, we're giving you a very important position. So what's his response? He tells them, if you're going to bring me back with you and I'm going to come with you to fight against Bnei Amin, V'nosan Hashem oisom lefanoi, and Hashem will indeed give them to give them to me. Anoichi ehay alochem leroish, I will be your roish. Seemingly, Yiftach is just saying, okay, fine, whatever you said, that's what I'm agreeing to. But it seems a bit extra because then Pasuk Yud that Zikne Gilo tell him Hashem will, will will accept what we're saying. It's like a, it's a bit repetitive. So what's going on over here? So again, there's many different ways of saying the narrative. One way of saying it is is that he, he's telling them. You're basically offering me that if I'm going to come with you and I'm going to win the battle, then you're going to make me the leader. Then you're going to make me the rebel. But he says, if I win the battle, I don't need your, I don't need your favors. It's like in Israel when the generals after the wars, uh, Arik Sharon, whatever. Now he's the cause. Of, well, I lift the Gagan Eden by now, but uh, a lot of the tsarists we have today is part of his terrible decisions that he made. But why he he became very popular because in previous battles he was a very successful general, and therefore when he came into politics everybody cho chose for him. La have in America. Yeah, in America you have these. Uh, Actors that they run for governor and they win. Meshugana, uh, like Ma Kesher, how could he become a governor? So it's from Meshugana State, so it's understood. But still, like Ma Kesher, this person. And even before that, there was a different actor who became president. He actually had to work that very well. But these people are actors and they're like, oh, nothing to do with politics or being leaders. But because they're so they're so popular with the with with with, with, the, with the people, so therefore they become leaders. So Yiftach is telling them, your offer is not you're not really giving me anything. You're telling me I'm gonna come with you, I'll be successful. Successful, then I'll be the Rosh. Obviously, if I'm going to be a successful warrior, you guys, you, you, whether you like it or not, I'm going to be the Rosh. And therefore, 
So therefore, what Yiftach is saying is, okay, according to this way of saying the story is, I want, when I come now already, I'm the race right away. Regardless of what happens, whether I win, whether I lose, before I go to war, I want to be already now. In order for me to see that you guys really apologize, that you guys really realize what you did was wrong to me, and you re- recognize now that I'm not such an Isvar, I'm not a, I'm not a Ben Yishazayna, so you, know, you have to make me the race right now, and then I'm willing to come with you. That's why one, one way of saying the story, what he, what he said. Another way of saying the story is that he's telling them is, is that the exact opposite. It's a different version. Like I said, a complete opposite thing. He's telling them, you guys are offering me to be the Rosh no matter what. According to this narrative, they told him L'Chadchile this word. They're the ones that told him L'Chadchile the word that they're willing to give him to be the Rosh right away. And he told them, no, I'm not deserving of it. I know who I am. And even though I don't, I don't think I was right to be kicked out, to be sent away, that was wrong what you did to me, but I'm still not worthy enough of being the Rebbe. That I can't do. And that I, I'm not going to know. I'm only going to know that if Hashem makes me successful. If I'll be successful in the war, then I see that Hashem is with me, then I know that I can do it. But until then, I'm not willing. So in the words of the, both words can fish, the way the Pasuk is reading, okay, according to the first chapter, if you bring him to Bnei Amin, I'll be your leader regardless, because I just won the battle. That's one way. The second way of saying it is, if then Hashem is successful, only then So two di- completely different ways of, spe- of, of, of enticing what he's saying, but they both fit into the words. Again, the, the first part is that he's telling them that I want to be a rebel right away. I want to be right away to show you that, that, that you're, guy, you're talking apologizing. The second way is that he's, tra- he's telling them the opposite, that I don't think I'm worthy yet. Only if I'll be successful in battle, that's when I know that Hashem is uh, supporting me. That's when I know I can go ahead with this and I can be the, I can be the Rosh. According to either Pshat, Zik Negilod accepts. Hashem is our witness, whatever you want goes. According to both Pirushim, either you are the Rosh right now, either you're the Rosh right now, you come back now, already you're the leader, we're going to announce everyone from now on, it's till now you were Mr. Yiftach, now you're Rabbi Yiftach, Grand Rabbi Yiftach, Yiftach HaShoifet, you're the greatest now, or the second shot, you'll come with us, and from now on, after the battle, we'll see what's going to happen, and then you'll decide already if you want to be the Rebbe or not. The pile Yiftach agrees, and Yiftach comes back, Vayelech Yiftach and Zik Negilad, he comes back with them, and the Pasuk clearly says, Vayasimu Ha'am Oisei Aleim, L'Reishu L'Katsin. And for many people, it was like a very big woe. That guy that we threw out, Mitam Olav, is coming back and being the Rosh. The Yizik Negil, that they, they realize that has to happen. He becomes the Rosh and the Kotsin, meaning he right away becomes, I think in America it's also like that. Officially in America, the president is, has the title, he's the commander in chief of the army. Say, no? Yeah, no. That's how it works. So he's a president, commander in chief. It's uh, both titles. So Yiftach was the Rosh and the Kotsin. The head political power and the head military power was in one person. It was both. Some of Farshim point out that he dafka, according to the ones that basically, as, if you're noticing, that you can portray Yiftach in different ways. Even portray him as, as the way the Gemara says, a Kalsha Bekalim, like the lowest of the low, like he was not a, like a gangster, a, like a mafioner, it was like that. Or you can describe him, like we said last time, to try to make a the way the Rebbe's, Rebbe's Kav always is, all these people are holier than they appear, and try to make him better. But according to the way to make him look worse, so he was trying to keep all the powers for himself. Which a lot of times with the, with the mafia, it's known that whenever you deal with the mafia, when they, 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 it's very hard to negotiate with them because when they want something, there's no negotiating. This is how it is. If you don't like it, mechulu. So that's why Yiftach has said, "I want this, I want that. I'm getting everything." So he comes in, I'm rosh and I'm cutting. I'm getting all the jobs. Everything is under my control. I'm not giving in everything else. So that's how uh, many, most mefarshim when they describe Yiftach, it's uh, not so uh, pleasant. But we can say differently that they were telling him, "We're giving you whatever you want because you're deserving of it." And then, by Yedaber Yiftach is called Vorov Lifne Hashem by Mitzvah. Yiftach comes to the Mitzvah and he speaks to Hashem. You have all by the Koisel, all these politicians, all these the gangsters, whatever they are, come to the Koisel, put on a big nice yamulke, and they stand over there with the pictures. They look like such angels, such sweet people at Avenue. So Yiftach comes now to, again, one way of saying the story, he comes to the Mitzvah now, and he davens to Hashem, and a nice prayer, and he fits the job. That's one way of saying it. 
Um, another way of saying it is that like, that he comes and he talks to Hashem in the mitzvah. He's diving to Hashem. Hashem, I want to see if I want to be successful. I, I don't know if I'm worthy for the job. I'm turning to you. You know what I went through in my life? I was always put down. I was always shunned. I was, I was bullied. I was chased away. So I, I, may, I, I might have made some bad choices as a result. But now I'm coming back to I want to be part of the Jewish nation again. I want to do what I have to do. I didn't really learn too much trade in my life, which is a big factor in the continuation of the story later on. So Hashem, I'm here. What, I'm, I'm ready for you. I'm, 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 I, want, I want you to give me brachas and make me successful. And this all happens in the mitzvah. Where is the mitzvah? The mitzvah, the word mitzvah means like a, an overlook. Yeah, overlook. A lot of times you go on the highway, you see a scenic overlook. It's a place where you can see a very big, uh, a big valley or mountains or whatever it may be. So the overlooks are meant just for scenic views. Today that's all we care about. But in the times of war, the overlooks are important for strategy. Those are places where you can see from far and see if the enemy is coming. So the mitzvah was a place, was a strategic location where they had. Huh? Pikes Peak, yeah, yeah. So that's a strategic location where they have the, the real Pikes Peak, by the way, is not in the post, not in the Iowa. The real Pikes Peak is in Colorado. That's a real Pikes Peak, higher up over there, the mountain somewhere. That was, that was connected to some kind of battle, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe this one is also. Love Shabbat. The kids are, so a mitzvah was a, was a big player, look, overlooking place, and the Mepharshim say that this is a place where the Yidin Bechlal always knew it's a special place, because Yeshua bin Nun, in his battles, he davened at this spot. So they came to the spot that was also next to Yiftach's home, so he davens over there, Tasha. Now, Pasuk Yudbeis says right away, Vayishlach Yiftach Malachi Melech Bnei Amen. He's already starting right away to start negotiating with the enemy to deal with them. However, later on, uh, one of the many, many important lessons of the story of Yiftach is Yiftach gives us a timeline. Yeah, we mentioned we spoke about Shimshon, that there's a lot of machlekes in about times, how things worked out. So one of the ways to calculate all the times of the Shoftim is when Yiftach, in his conversation with Bnei Amin, he says, it's 300 years since we got here. We're here for 300 years already. So, oh, we now have an exact number right now. So based on that, calculations happen. Based on those calculations, this conversation did not happen right after Yiftach came. Rather, it happened a year later. Which means that according to this, when Yiftach came, the Bnei Amon, which we mentioned, that Yiftach was already a known warrior. He was a mercenary. People knew about it. And when Bnei Amon found out that, that the Yid did now have Yiftach as a general, they backed out. That was already, they realized that this is not a good idea. Yiftach is there. We got to be careful. We're not ready to, we're not ready yet to wage war. It's like the, like the, the people know that America is supporting Israel, but they're afraid to mix in or the opposite. It's Israel supporting America, they're afraid to start with America, right? So, the uh, Cheshbon is, no one got it. So, the, um, so the, the, the point is, it, so, so the, the, they back down, they weren't ready. But again, we didn't learn this together, but in the pedicure it says that they were mamish gathering together, they were about to come and attack, and suddenly for a year everything is quiet because they were afraid. They were regrouping, they were trying to think strategy. What could they do now that they have a, a, a stronger enemy? Now that they have Yiftach leading them, they're more concerned. So they went away, a year goes by, and now after a year goes by, Yiftach realizes what's going on. There's probably intelligence. He's probably being told that if you don't start up with them, they're going to start up with you, which is what happened in the Six-Day War. One of the, 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 the biggest Alpiteva, the biggest Nitzachim that the Israelis had in any of the battles was the war of the, of the Six-Day War, because they listened to the Rebbe, basically, and the Israelis attacked first. It wasn't attacked out of nowhere, because they knew that the Egyptians want to attack them. So instead of waiting for them to attack them, and then Chas Vashom have another Sub they ended up going first, and that's where the, uh, uh, I mean the October 7th, how it's called. So that's why the Yidun went first, and they not wiped out their Air Force, can you do it, the whole story. So Yiftach is now being proactive as a good military leader. Again, he's a very, very talented person. He really knows how to get things done. So he realizes he has to go reach out to Bnei Amin to try to see if we can work things in a peaceful way instead of having... Um, hmm? He was, he was very, very smart in all that, in, in, in strategy, in, in, in leadership, in, in, in the negotiations. He did it very well. So therefore, he realizes after the intelligence gathering of a year, he knows what he has to do now. So he sends Vaishlach Yiftach Malachi Melech Bnei Amin Lamer. He sends messengers to Melech Bnei Amin, and he says, Ma li valoch ki vose ilai li lochim barzi. What do you have with me that you're coming to my land? Now realize, Yiftach is talking about himself. This is my land already. I'm the Rebbe now. I'm in charge over here. You're messing with me right now. What are you coming to my land for? What's, what, 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 what's, your, what's your issues? What, what's your problems exactly? 
So if the Achsenig, the Melech Amin really hears, hears this kind of, he hears like the, the strength of, of Yiftach's argument. So he has to respond now. So now, actually, it's very, very interesting. This whole story now is so, so similar to what's going on in Eretz Yisrael right now. The same thing, the arguments about the land, that does it belong to Eretz Yisrael, belong to the Arabs, Yimachshimam, what's going on over here. So so many of the details are similar. Meaning, the, the, the lies that, the, that the, the people in, in, in Gaza are saying now is almost the same lies that these people are saying over there, that Melech Benyamin says. Melech Benyamin adds, he answers in one pasuk. His answer is one pasuk, and Yiftach's response, proving him wrong, is like 20 psukim or 15 psukim, going on and on and on to explain how all the lies that you're saying. Because they have basically one line, from the river to the sea, yeah, which river, which sea, whatever, but that's, they want one line over and over that they want. And you are explaining, know the history, know what happened in 1948, know what happened in 1967, you know the story, know what's going on, what are you some hacking? You know, if you know the whole, the whole history and what's going on, you realize that your time just make no sense, and uh, not according to the, the seichel, not according to law, not according to the the most important factor, and all that, Yiftach is going to respond. But his, his thing is right away, very, very simple, Vayemer melech b'neyamin el malach Yiftach, the melech b'neyamin tells the messengers of Yiftach, I, I have a very simple request of you. This is the Arabs. Very simple. What I want. The Yidin took my land. Return the land and there's going to be peace. Yeah, Mom is the same. Huh? From where to where? So this is not from the river. This is from the river to the river to the river. This is imagine, if you imagine like this, if you have Eretz Yisrael, you have this like the Eretz Yisrael. So here we have the Yarden. The Yarden is over here. There are two rivers that go out over here. One is called Nachal Arin, one is Nachal Yaboik. Nachal Yaboik is called the, the Zarka. I was looking it up for something else. The Zarka River. So it's basically, imagine more or less a sea, something like that. It's not obviously straight lines. So there's the Arnain and there's the Yabaik. So this whole area, this whole sea area, say, we're now the Yidin are living over there. Gilad is also part of that land. So that all is our land. That you, you, you took it from us. Give it back to us and there'll be peace. Mamish, you hear the same words today. All Gaza wants. Give us back Gaza. Give us back the West Bank. And then there's going to be peace. And we gave it back to them, which was terribly wrong. And we see what kind of peace we got. But this is the same words of Bnei Amin. So, so Yiftach responds. Va Yosef oid Yiftach va Yishlach Malachim al Melech Bnei Amin loyim. He sends messengers back again. It's gonna be a long, long answer. The answer has four parts to it. Four parts to what's going, what, what he's telling him. The first part is it doesn't say this clearly in the Pesukim, but all the Mefarshim point out. The first part is what are you hacking? You are Amin. This land never belonged to you. This land belonged to Moyov, not never belonged to Amin. The way it was, again, if you look at the sea, the way it works is, is that there was Arnon and Yaboik, and Moyov was a lot more south. This whole area that you're talking about, more north, was never yours, Bechlau. That would belong to Moyov. So what are you Bechlau mixing in? This land, Bechlau, had nothing to do with you ever. Same thing, it's like Bechlau belongs to the British. Hmm? British, and before that, to whom? The Ottoman Empire. Well, very good. What does Ottoman Empire mean? Who was that? The Turkey. Sheesh, can I know LEC, Kalakavo. Or the other from here, you know who Huh? <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> All right. So the first thing is he, he hints this that this first time that, that he responds back to them is So the first thing he says he didn't never first he said, he asked the word Eretz Moyov to point out the chlal if anything it's Eretz Moyov. But even that's not true, as we'll soon see. It's not Eretz Moyov either, but it's for sure not Eretz Bnei So that's your first taina that you're saying that the Jews took our land, they left Messiah to land, it's not true. It's not, so that's number one. And then he continues explaining the Hem Shechad Vardim, what happened. He says, he repeats the history, and over here he actually adds details about what happened when the Yidin left Mitzrayim in their wars, in their negotiations. And Rashi and Chumash actually points out that some details in Chumash are missing, and Yiftach is the one telling us, which points out that Yiftach wasn't such an ignorant person. Some people make Yiftach into terrible Amaretz, which there's sources for that in Chazal. But here we see he knew the history, he knew what happened with the Yidin, so he wasn't just an ignorant person. He was obviously, like I said, a very talented person. He didn't learn Yeshiva 100%. He didn't didn't know all the halachas of everything, but he definitely knew enough to, to, to what's going on in the history of the, of the Jewish people, which is an important lesson to Bachrim, that a lot of Bachrim, you know, they're the drinks and they don't know nothing. So Mamele, if you want to be successful in a mafia, you at least know the history of the Jewish people. So to know what's going on, where they went, where they went, where they, where they negotiated, and all those things. All right. Ham Shekhyom. Bezrat Hashem.